Chapter 18 The Cave So with a deal agreed, they headed towards the sea and boarded a boat for free. Then Moses watched with great surprise as before his eyes, Khidr glided to the hull of the ship's planks and ripped one up high. And Moses cried out, How strange this action that has come about. You tried to scuttle the ship and drown the people on it. And Khidr replied, What of our agreement where you ask no questions? And Moses implored, Forgive my impatient suggestions, nothing else will I mention. So they travelled on to a town and on the outskirts found some boys playing around. And Khidr went to one, grabbed his head, pulled it clean off, and the rest of the body dropped to the ground. And Moses yelled, What a gross and terrible thing to you. You have killed an innocent boy who has done nothing to you. And Khidr replied, Again you backtrack on the words you confirmed when you said you'd ask no questions of me. And Moses apologized, If I forget again then I will leave, and you can carry on free of me. So they went to the town of Antioch, and on the outskirts was a dirt wall on the point of falling down, which Khidr stopped to repair, and Moses stared on watching and said, Why did you fix it in that way, without anyone requesting assistance or offering pay? And Khidr said, Here's the point where I will leave and different ways will take us, but before I go I will tell you the meaning of the things that you could not bear with patience. The boat people were believers who made a living from the sea, and coming up behind them was a tyrant king who stole other boats violently. So I pulled the plank up for it to appear as if it was damaged, so it would remain the owner's property. The boy was to grow to be wicked to his parents, so some of God's servants asked God to spare them and give them a child who would respect and care for them. The boy had not yet hit puberty, so as your Lord decreed, those of his age who die will be granted a place in heaven with Abraham for eternity. And under the wall was a treasure hidden cleverly by a believer for his progeny who were orphans in the town, and if any other had repaired it, then their inheritance would have been found. These things that I reveal to you are not things that I have chosen to do. I have just followed what our Lord had decreed, as he always knows what is best for humanity. Prophet, the people also ask you about dul Qurnayn. Say, I will tell you something of the man by that name. We gave him the means to achieve all things, and endowed his people with tremendous skills. They set off east, and as the sun was setting he came to a muddy bog, and near where he stopped, a group of people were lodged. When we said dul Qurnayn, you may choose which of them to reward and which of them to punish in shame. He replied, We'll punish the evil who didn't believe, and when they return to their Lord they'll be punished more severely, but those who believe and do good deeds will find what we ask clear and easy. Next, he came to a place between two mountains, and a foreign isolated people who came out to shout to him, Dul Qurnayn, Gog and Magog are ruining our land. If we pay you, please say you'll protect us. He said, I already have all I need from my Lord, so gather your blacksmiths and bring us iron to build a barrier high and then heat the metal until it's molten and glows like fire. And when the work was done, he turned to say, Now you people will be safe. But when God wills, he'll raise this barrier to the ground, the last day's trumpet will sound and God will gather the people from all around and he'll show hell to the disbelievers, the liars and schemers, who made themselves blind to my signs, and took us their gods, servants of mine. Prophet, tell the people of those who have the most to lose, it is those who choose to ignore and abuse our commands. In truth, the path for some will be easy, for those who wish to listen, repent and believe in me. But for those who aim for good deeds without belief, on the day they will see, the total of their good deeds scale will be empty. Punishment for them will be nothing less than hell, a just reward for the lies they used to tell. But for those whose belief bears fruit of good deeds, they will find themselves in the garden never wishing to leave. And prophet, tell people, all your Lord's words could never be recorded, even if you took all the earth's water and transformed it into ink and doubled it you would still have trouble penning even a fraction of his words. So remind the people that like them, you are a human too, who worships and believes his God is one, and would never give to any other creation 
the worship and awe that God was due. Chapter 19 Mary Af ha ya ain saad Letters of the Arabic language of which God alone knows what they refer to and mean, but the respected scholar Ibn Abbas said it stands for the sufficient guiding knowledgeable creator, a tribute to the Lord of mercy. This is a reminder of the mercy of your Lord towards Zakaria, his servant who called on him, secretly asking, Lord, I have never prayed to you in vain, even though my hair is grey and my bones have weakened. Lord, I fear what my kinsmen will do when I am gone. My wife is barren. Grant me a successor, a gift from you, to be my heir and to the heir of the family of Jacob. And Lord, make him well pleasing to you. And the angel Gabriel said, Zachariah, we bring you news of a son whose name will be John, a name given to no one before. He said, But Gabriel, how can I have a son when my wife is barren and I am old and frail, not young any more? And Gabriel replied, Your Lord says, It is easy for me. I created you before your human form was manifest. And Zachariah believed in what would occur. He had faith in his Lord. True faith in the Lord is best. So Zachariah said, Gabriel, tell me, what is the sign through which my Lord will show that my wife will have begun her pregnancy? And Gabriel replied, A time will come when you cannot speak for three days and nights. That is the sign of when it will be. Then Zachariah went out into his sanctuary and told his people to praise God continuously. And when John was born, we told him, John, hold on to the scripture firmly. And while John was still a boy, we granted him wisdom, tenderness from us and purity. He was devout and sincere, kind to his parents, not domineering and never acted rebelliously. Peace was upon him the day he was born, the day he died, and will be upon him the day he is raised again, and mentioned too in the Quran the story of Mary, so that it is well explained. She withdrew from her family to a place in the east side of their house and secluded herself away, and we sent her our spirit, the messenger Gabriel, and he came to her in the form of a man and she turned to him to say, I seek the Lord of mercy's protection against you. If you fear him, then keep away. But he said, I am a messenger from the Lord, announcing you will have a son, pure in every way. She said, How can I have a son when no man has touched me? I have not been unchaste. And he said, God says it is easy for me. We shall make him a sign to all people in every place. He will be a blessing from us. And so it was ordained. Jesus was conceived, and Mary withdrew to a distant place, and when in labour pain she clung to a palm tree and cried out for relief, saying, I wish I had been long dead and forgotten before all this had come about. But Gabriel cried, Do not worry, God has provided a stream by your feet, he has not left you without. And if you shake the trunk of the tree, it will bring fresh dates for you to eat. So be glad, eat and drink, and if you see any human come by asking about your child, say, I have a vow to God that I will not of this matter speak. She went back to her people carrying the child and they said, Mary, you must have done a terrible deed. You're of the tribe of Aaron, an honourable people. Your father is devout and your mother kept her chastity. Mary simply pointed at the child as an answer and they asked, How will we speak to him in his infancy? But baby Jesus said, I am a servant of God. He has granted me scripture and made me a prophet and made me blessed wherever I be. He commanded me to give alms as long as I live, to cherish my mother and to not be domineering or without grace. Peace was on me the day I was born, the day I die and the day I am raised again. Such was the story of Jesus, son of Mary. This is the truth of which the disbelievers are in doubt. God is far above having a child. When he decrees something to be, he says be and it comes about. And Jesus said, God is my Lord and your Lord, so serve him, that is the straight path. But some of those who followed Jesus erred, and in time the community split into different parts. Some knew he was a prophet of God, but some elevated his status foolishly, saying Jesus was a son of God, a partner God, or that he was part of a three-part deity. Terrible suffering will come upon those who obscure the truth in such a way. 
they will suffer the worst of punishments with the coming of Judgment Day. They will clearly see and clearly hear how wrong they were when they are returned to their Lord. So warn them, Muhammad, that the matter will be made clear to them on the day of remorse. For they are a heedless people, they surely do not believe, and we will inherit the earth and all that's on it, and all are returned to us as we decree. Narrate too in the Qur'an the story of Abraham, who was a prophet, a man of truth, who said to his father, How can you worship what cannot hear or see, or in any way benefit you? My father, certain knowledge has eluded you, but it has come to me, so follow on the Lord's straight path, do not worship Satan, he rebelled against the Lord of mercy. Father, I fear punishment from the Lord will come to you, and you will be Satan's companion in hell, and his father said, Abraham, do you dare to reject my gods? Keep out of my way, or I will stone you as well. And Abraham said to him, Peace be with you. I'll ask God for your forgiveness. He is always gracious to me. But now I will leave you and the idols you pray to, and I'll pray to my Lord obediently. I trust that my prayer will not be in vain. So he left his people and the idols they worshipped, and we granted him Isaac and Jacob and made them prophets, made them noble and devoted. Narrate too in the Qur'an the story of Moses, specially chosen, a messenger and prophet indeed. We called him beside the mountain and brought him close so he could hear our speech. And out of our grace we gave him a brother, Aaron, to accompany him as a prophet too. And narrate also in the Qur'an the story of Ishmael, a prophet and messenger, who to his promise was true. He commanded his household to pray and give alms, and his Lord was pleased with him. Narrate too the story of Idris, a prophet and man of truth, who he raised to a high position. These are the prophets God blessed, from the seed of Adam, through which Noah on the ark was carried, and from the seed of Abraham and Israel, we chose and guided them, they were obedient to me. And when they heard the revelations of the Lord of mercy, they fell down on their knees and wept. But after them came generations who treated God's words with neglect. They ignore the obligation of prayer. They follow their own desires. But they will come face to face with their evil deeds when their time for punishment transpires. But those who repent and believe and do good deeds will enter the paradise. They will not be wronged. They will have gardens of bliss to enjoy the eternal life. Such is the promise of God to his servants. The garden is unseen, but its promise will be fulfilled. They will only hear peaceful talk in there, nothing bad, and will enjoy the state they are in. They will be given provision morning and evening, such is the life in the garden, decreed for those who are devout. This is the supreme truth from your Lord. What your Lord decrees will surely come about. And there was a time when revelation was withheld. It did not come for a number of days. So the prophet asked Gabriel, What stops you from visiting me and bringing revelation my way? And Gabriel said, We only bring revelation at your Lord's command. To him belong all things. He knows the affairs of the hereafter, those of the world, and all in between that happen. Your Lord is never forgetful. He is the Lord of the heavens and earth, and all in them do worship him. Be steadfast in your worship. Is there any equal to God, or of his title, true Lord? Is there any that are also deserving? And some disbelievers mock, What? Once I am dead, I'll be brought back to life again? Does he not realize that we created him before he had a human form, and before he was given a name? I created him when he was just a drop of sperm and he will be returned to me. So as I gave him life this first time, I can surely resurrect him with ease. Prophet, we shall gather such people and the devils together just outside of hell and put them on their knees, and then seize from each group the one who is most obedient to the Lord of mercy. We know best who deserves to burn in hell, but every one of you will see its flames as they pass over hell on the bridge towards paradise and only the righteous will be saved. Your Lord's promise will be fulfilled, the evil ones will be left there on their knees, and yet the disbelievers mock the believers, even when we send down our verses in all their clarity. They say who is in the better position, and who has the stronger army? We have destroyed many generations before them, 
who surpass their worldly riches and finery. Say, Prophet, as for those in error, may the Lord of mercy give them long life, allowing them to wander blindly, and when punishment comes to them, only then will the truth be realized. Either they'll be punished in this life, or punished when returned to him at the hour, then they'll realize who had had the better position, and which group of people had more power. But God gives more guidance to those who are guided, and good deeds of lasting merit are best. They are more rewarding in God's sight. Yet have you consider the one who rejects, the one who turns away from our revelations arrogantly, to say, I'll be given wealth and children certainly. Has he received knowledge of that, or a promise to get them from the Lord of mercy? No, we shall certainly take down what he says in his record, and prolong his punishment indeed, and all he boasts of having will be returned to us, and he'll be brought to us alone, individually. The disbelievers have taken other gods beside God to give them strength, but those gods will reject them, and on the day they will assert their devotion to the one true Lord, and of other disbelievers turn against them. Have you, prophet, not considered that we send out devils to tempt the disbelievers into sin? We are counting down the time till their punishment, so you need not be impatient concerning them. On the day we shall gather the righteous as honoured servants of the Lord of mercy and drive the sinners into hell like a herd of animals towards a river when thirsty. And none will have power of intercession except those to whom God gives permission. He is the King, He is the Lord, the Master of the Day of Decision. The disbelievers claim that God has offspring. How terrible is the thing they say. It almost causes the heavens to be torn apart and the earth to split and the mountains to crumble away. Such is the severity of attributing offspring to the Lord, the Almighty. It does not befit him to have offspring. All in the heavens and earth are simply servants of the Lord of mercy. He knows exactly how many of his servants there are and on the day they'll return to him alone and the Lord of mercy will show love to those who believe and do good deeds they will have the garden as the eternal home. We have made the Qur'an easy for you to understand, Prophet. We have sent it in your native tongue, so that you may give good news to the righteous and give warning to the stubborn, disbelieving ones. How many generations have we destroyed before them? Do you perceive a single one of them now, or hear as much as a whisper from them? Just as we destroyed those communities, we can destroy the inhabitants of this town. Chapter 20. Taha. I take refuge from the devil the accursed, and I begin with the name of God in this verse. Taha. Muhammad, this Quran was not sent down to be a source of distress for you, but a reminder for those who keep God in awe, the one who created earth and the high heaven too. He is the Lord of mercy, established on the throne. All things between the heavens and earth, and between earth's soil, are under his control. Whatever you choose to say aloud, he knows, and he knows what you keep secret and hidden as well. God the One, no God but Him, owner of the most excellent names, the most merciful. Prophet, do you know the story of Moses when he took his family to Egypt but got lost on the way? And he saw a fire in the distance, he presumed it a camp, and said to his family, I will return without delay. I'll head to the camp I see in the distance and bring back news of which direction to go, or at least bring back some brands of fire to warm you from the cold. But when he reached the fire, a voice called out from his right side beside the tree, saying, Moses, I am your Lord, take off your shoes, for you are in Tours' sacred valley. I have chosen you, so listen close to what I reveal to you. I am God, the One, there is no God but me, the ever-living and the merciful. Worship me and keep up the prayer, so that you may remember me. The hour is coming, though I keep it secret, and each person then will be rewarded for their deeds. Do not listen to those who don't believe in the hour, and follow their own desires, and distract you from keeping the hour and meeting in mind, lest they lead you to the fire. And God said, Moses, declare what is in your right hand. It is my staff, Moses said. I lean on it, I restrain my sheep with it and I have other uses for it instead. And God said, throw it down, Moses, and so he did. 
and it became a fast-moving snake. And God said, Pick it up without fear, we shall return it to its former state. And when he saw his staff begin to slither like a snake, he fled in fear, not wanting to come back. But God said, Do not be afraid, put your hand in your shirt, it will turn white. And it was a miraculous sign, as Moses' skin colour was originally black. This is another sign from us. We do this to show you some of our great signs. Go to Pharaoh, for he has clearly become a tyrant, believing his powers to be like mine. And Moses said, Lord, lift up my heart and ease my tongue. Untie it so Pharaoh can understand me, as Moses had burnt his mouth with coal as a child, and so sometimes spoken clearly. Lord, allow me a helper from my family, my brother Aaron. Supplement my strength through him. Let him share my task as you watch over us, so we can glorify you and remember you often. And God said, Moses, your request is granted. We showed you favour before indeed. We inspired your mother to put you in the basket, in the river, and we ensured your safety. We let the river take you away, and when we found you, you were taken into the house of an enemy of mine. And while there I showed you love, and all that happened, happened under my watchful eye. When your mother heard you were safe, her heart ached to be with you again, and if we had not strengthened her heart and made her of those who believe, she'd have gone back to stake her claim. So she said to her daughter, Find out news of your brother. So she listened out for any news, and we ordained certain wet nurses for you, but when they tried to feed you, you refused. And your sister heard of these events, so she went to the wet nurses and said, Shall I tell you of a woman who will take care of his feeding and bring him up for you instead? And in this way we returned you to your mother, so that she was comforted and did not grieve. Know that what God promises is always true, but most do not know this, except those who truly believe. Later when you accidentally killed a man, we saved you from distress, and after that we persisted, we tried you with other tests. You grew to maturity, we gave you knowledge and wisdom, and this is how we reward those who do righteous deeds. You entered your city to find one of your people being harassed by an Egyptian, and the Israelite begged you to intercede. So you told the Egyptian not to abuse the Israelite, but the Egyptian said he'd make a slave of you instead. So you hit the man as he advanced in self-defense to warn him off, but the Egyptian dropped down dead. You had not intended this, so you buried the man, and to your Lord prayed, Lord, forgive me, I have wronged myself. This is Satan's work, inciting my anger. He has led me astray. You stayed amongst the people of Midian for years, and have now come here as I have ordained. I have chosen you myself. Now go with your brother and take my signs. Remember me every step of the way. Go to Pharaoh, he has exceeded all bounds. Speak to him gently so he'll take heed, and tell him there is no deity but God alone, so he has the opportunity to believe in me. They said, Lord, we fear he will transgress and do us harm. So God said, Do not be afraid. I am with you both, all hearing and all seeing. So go to Pharaoh and say, We are your Lord's messengers, so send the children of Israel with us. Refrain from oppressing them. We have brought you a sign from your Lord. Those who reject the truth will suffer the punishment. But those who follow right guidance shall have peace. They are the ones who will succeed. And so Moses and Aaron went to Pharaoh and offered him a chance to leave his disbelief. When they told Pharaoh of the Almighty, he said, Who is this Lord of yours of whom you speak? And Moses said, It is he who gave all things their shape and form. He is the one, the Almighty, the unique. It is he who gives all things their guidance. And Pharaoh asked, What of the generations that came before? And Moses replied, Knowledge of them is kept in his record. He does not err or forget. He has knowledge of them all. He is the one who spread out the earth for you and made paths for you in it. He sends down water from the sky to bring forth the plants so that your cattle can be nourished. There are truly signs in this for people of understanding. From the earth you were created, and to it you will return, and from the earth on the day we shall raise you again for a second term. And we showed Pharaoh many of our signs, but he denied them and refused to change, saying, Have you come to send us from the land, Moses, 
will match your sorcery with more of the same. Make an appointment we will both keep in a place upon which we both agree. When the sun is high on the feast day, gather people to see who has more power, you and your lord or me. So Pharaoh went and gathered his mischievous sorcerers and brought them forth that day. And Moses warned them, Do not invent lies about God, lest he destroy you. Those who invent lies will fail. And the sorcerers talked amongst themselves, saying Moses and Aaron wish to drive us from the land and will use their sorcery to end our way of living, so united we must stand. We must gather all we know and prepare for the contest, the winner of which will surely succeed. So they turned and said, Moses, shall you throw down what you have first, or shall we proceed? And Moses said, Throw, and through sorcery their staffs were made to look like moving snakes. And Moses feared the people would be taken in by the trick, but we inspired him, saying, Don't be afraid. Throw the staff that is in your right hand. It will swallow up the trickery they have produced indeed. They had only produced a sorcerer's trick, and wherever they go, they will not prosper through sorcery. And when the sorcerers saw that their trickery had been vanquished, they threw themselves down in submission, saying, We believe in the Lord of Aaron and Moses. But Pharaoh raged, For that I have not given you permission. Moses must be the one who taught you witchcraft. You will be punished for disobeying me. How dare you do something before I command it. I will cut off your alternate hands and feet. Then I will crucify you to the trunks of palm trees, and you will see whose punishment is more severe, mine or the punishment of the Lord of Aaron and Moses. But the sorcerers remained sincere. They said, We shall never prefer you over the clear sign from the Lord that has come. Do as you wish to us through punishment in this life, but you have no control over us in the next one. We believe in our Lord and hope he'll forgive us for the sins and sorcery you forced us to do. God is better and more lasting than any punishment received from disobeying you. Those who return to their Lord as evildoers will have hell as their reward. There they'll stay, never to perish or to enjoy a single moment for all the evil deeds they've stored. But those who return to God as true believers with righteous deeds will be highly rewarded indeed. Gardens of bliss, there to stay, the reward for those who purify themselves constantly. And we revealed to Moses, Go with my servants in the night, and use your staff to strike a path. Do not fear being caught by Pharaoh, or fear drowning when you come to the sea. You will safely pass. And Pharaoh chased the children of Israel. He and his armies were drowned while in pursuit. Pharaoh did not guide his people rightly, and they followed him, so for them the punishment is due. Children of Israel, we rescued you from your enemy and gave Moses scripture when you were safe and stood by the right-hand side of the mountain, and then we sent you manna and quails. And we said, Eat from the good things we have provided, but do not overstep the limits that I have set, lest my wrath fall on you and those on whom it falls have truly fallen, they will have the fire and be filled with regret. Yet I am most forgiving and merciful to those who repent and believe. Those who do righteous deeds and stay on the right path, they'll be the ones brought close to me. And when Moses went to Mount Sinai, God said, Why have you come forth in haste? And Moses explained he had come first to please the Lord, but God said, In your absence your people have gone astray. We have tested them while you were gone, as Samiri has led them to sin. He has fashioned for them a calf from molten jewellery, which they have begun worshipping. And Moses returned to his people angry. He was truly aggrieved with them, and said, My people, did you not make a promise with God? Why would you go back on it again? Was my absence too long to bear? Did you wish for God's anger to come down on you? And they said, We did not do it deliberately. El Samiri enticed us too. We were weighed down by all the jewellery we had, so we threw it all in the fire, and he used the molten mound to create a golden calf. That is how our lapse transpired. He made it hollow, so when the wind blew, it made a whistling sound, and El Samiri said, Moses has become confused. This calf is where your God and his God are found. Did they not see that the calf gave them no answer? and that it could not benefit them. 
Aaron had said, this calf is a test for you. Follow me to your true Lord, but they ignored him. And they said, we will not give up worshipping this calf until Moses returns to us. And when he returned, Moses said to Aaron, why did you let them carry on doing such? When you saw they were astray, why did you not follow orders and come for me? And Aaron said, son of my mother, let go of my beard and hair that you are pulling out so angrily. I did not follow because if I had, those who did not worship the calf would have left too. And I feared you'd say you've disobeyed me, you've split the people. This division was caused by you. And Moses turned to El Samiri and said, What is the matter with you? Why did you do this deed? And El Samiri said to Moses, I saw what others did not see. And Moses turned to El Samiri and said, What is the matter with you? Why did you do this deed? And El Samiri said to Moses, I saw what others did not see. I saw a chance to make a cow to worship like the people of my village did, to which my soul had prompted me. And Moses said, You are banished from here, and will spend the rest of your life in utter banishment and lonely. And you have an appointment on judgment day, from which there is no escape. Look at your God, the calf you made. It cannot help you or itself in any way. We shall reduce it back to pieces and scatter it into the sea. People know, your God is the one true God. His knowledge encompasses all things completely. And in this way we tell you, prophet, the stories of the events that happened before your time. We have given you our Qur'an, and those who turn away from it head for their own demise. They will have heavy punishment on the day of resurrection that will last indefinitely, and on the day when the trumpet sounds, the guilty are gathered, those who are blind to the signs sent by me. They will whisper to one another, we only stayed for ten days on earth, I swear. But the more perceptive will say, it was more like we stayed for a single day when on there. And prophet, they ask you about the mountains. Say, on the day my Lord will turn them to dust and leave the earth a flat and level plain. It will have no peaks or troughs. On that day, people will follow the summoner, Angel Israfil. There will be no escape and every voice will be low in awe of the compassionate one as they gather in the meeting place. On that day intercession will be useless, except for those whom God grants permission, those whose words God approves of, those who say, there is no God but God in true submission. God knows what is before people, and he knows what is behind them, and all faces will be humbled before the ever-living watchful one. They cannot comprehend him. Those who carry evil deeds will despair, but those with righteous deeds will have no fear. Of any worries or deprivation, they will be of those who are brought near. We have sent the Qur'an in an Arabic tongue and given all kinds of warning therein, so people may beware or take heed and change the state they are in. Exalted is the one who is in control. All things belong to him. He is the one to whom all things return, the ever-merciful, the provider, the king. Prophet, do not rush to recite this revelation before Gabriel has finished relating all of it, but say, my Lord, increase me in knowledge and wait for the rest of it. Before you we commanded Adam not to eat from the tree, but he lapsed, forgot, disregarded our covenant. He was lacking in consistency. And when we created Adam, we turned to the group in the heavenly company who were made up of angels, and the father of the jinn, who was known as Iblis. He was there and got to join the angels in their raised degree, and we told them all bow down in respect to my creation Adam, and the angels all did so, but Iblis disobeyed me. So we told Adam, Iblis is you and your wife's enemy, do not let him from the garden drive you out, lest you'll become miserable from what follows, and in the garden you will never go without. In there you will never go hungry or feel naked, nor be thirsty or suffer the heat of the sun. But Iblis whispered to him, Shall I show you a tree to make you immortal, a truly special one? He tricked them and told them if they ate from the tree, they would never die. And when they ate, they saw their nakedness and tried to cover it. They were seduced by Satan's lies. Adam had disobeyed his Lord and been led astray. Later God brought him close and forgave him. And God accepted Adam's repentance and said, 
you are each other's enemy, you must leave the garden. Whoever of you people accepts my guidance when it comes will not be astray or have misery, but whoever turns away from it will have a life of great hardship and on the day will bring him blind to the assembly. And that person will ask, Lord, why did you bring me here blind? I was sighted in the life before. And God will say, you turn from our revelations, so today you are ignored. This is how we reward those who go to excess and did not believe in our revelations. The worst and longest punishment is in the next life, hell, truly the worst of stations. Did the disbelievers not draw a lesson from the previous generations we destroyed before? Have they not been to their dwelling places and walked through them and noted what they saw? There truly is a sign in this for those with understanding, and were it not for a date already set, the disbelievers would have already been destroyed. So prophet, ignore them, be patient. Celebrate the praise of your Lord before the rising and setting of the sun. Celebrate his praise at night and at the start of the day and when the day is done. Do this so you may find contentment and do not gaze longingly at what we have given some others to enjoy in the world of this life's finery. We test these people through what we've given them. A place in heaven is better and lasts for eternity. Order those with you prophet to pray and pray steadfastly yourself and worship none but me. We are not asking you to give us any kind of provision. It is us who provides for you. And the rewards of the next life are for the devout, those who are sincere and follow what is true. The disbelievers say, Why has God not sent Muhammad to us with a sign? Have they not received this Qur'an as clear proof, confirming the earlier scripture of mine? If we had destroyed them through punishment before this messenger came, they would have said, Lord, if you had sent a messenger before the punishment and humiliation, we would have followed him to faith. Prophet, tell the disbelievers, we are both waiting for the destruction of the other. So wait, we are waiting too. You will come to know who was rightly guided on the right path and who follows the path set for doom.